Hello, I'm Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and this is our opportunity with Video Voters Guide to help our electorate know more about our local candidates. I'm here today with Tana Sanchez, who is running from District 43 for the state legislature. Welcome, Tana. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thanks for coming. You bet. As a new candidate, tell us please about your background and why you wanted to run for the state legislature. Well, I'm native-born Oregonian, was born in Salem. Actually, my parents lived in Portland, but I was born in Salem. Uh, lived in my district most of my life, which is north and northeast Portland. Um, been, I've traveled quite a bit, so I've been back and forth uh, to Portland, but um, goodness, the late 80s, I came back pretty permanently. Um, I lived over by Sabin Elementary, 16th and Shaver for a while. My son, my son went to Sabin. Uh, then uh, we went to California for a couple of years where I got my um, certificate in alcohol and drug studies. Came back in 1996 and bought a house over by Jefferson. So we've been there for the last 19 years. Um, and when I came back, I got a, a job at Nea Family Center. So I've been there, started out as the second person hired as essentially a youth advocate, and I got to build the youth and education programs there. Uh, continued on uh, building uh, the domestic violence program there, the Healing Circle, our foster care program, aging and disability and veteran services, early childhood programming, so we have four Head Start classrooms, um, veterans housing, mobile housing, housing and energy assistance. We have lots of different resources at NEA that I got to, to participate in building. I've also been a volunteer at Coffee Creek Correctional Facility for many years, working with women exiting the prison system. So, you know, that's a little bit of who I am and uh, why I wanted to run is because I think all of those essentially resources that I have in terms of that education and that foundation are very translatable to the legislative process. Also, well, so I have a that uh, certificate in alcohol and drug studies. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology and communication and, and a master's degree in social work. All right. Yeah. For your particular district, talk a little bit about the neighborhood and the specific issues that concern your constituents. Well, so as I said, north and northeast Portland, so it's interstate all the way up to Cully. Lombard, kind of down to Prescott on the top end, down to 24th, 84, out to 84 and back around to, uh, to interstate. So it's pretty big, it's pretty broad. Suffered a lot of change over the years, um, a lot of uh, what people would say gentrification. Yes, indeed. Um, and so a lot of folks of color are moved out mm -hmm. uh, of the area and simply moved east because that's the unfortunate reality of just not being able to stay there, um, not being able to afford the properties there, not being able to buy there. I think that's the biggest, one of the biggest issues that we suffer there, um, and it's issues that people have talked about on the doorstep many, many times, is their biggest concern is that the livability of Northeast Portland. So um, that's one of the things I struggle with, of course. I bought my house 19 years ago when I could afford it, um, and I don't think my son will be able to afford to buy a house there, which is really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are concerns that we have, issues of poverty, issues of, of jobs not happening, um, just the availability of different jobs for, uh, you know, any your average human being, I guess. Um, overall concerns for me are education, that people be able to be educated well enough to have good living wage jobs. It's very, very important to me. It's the work that I do at NAIA Family Center, of course, is making sure that, you know, we're bringing, you know, people into the workforce, we're bringing, you know, youth and education, trying to, trying to really build those opportunities for community and families. Thank you. Um, a, a kind of specific question that may relate more or less to your specific district, but certainly is impacting the greater Portland area, and that is air quality. Do you think that the legislature should give additional tools to the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality, the DEQ, to improve its ability to protect our air? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm very, very concerned about that. Um, when the issues came to light and the, the recognition that Forest Service had done that work around the moss and, and determining those, that those heavy metals were in the air and possibly in our ground, it was very concerning to me. One of the things that we teach people all the time, in particular here in, in you know, our, our district, is growing food, is um, trying to do some level of sustainability. Um, as I, I mentioned, sort of the door knocking, I'm walking around and seeing people with their own uh, small gardens, of course, and 
the chickens and we have a goat urban goat farm there in, in northeast Portland those things exist and we want really we want people to be able to maintain that type of thing I was very concerned to find out that there was a hot spot just north of Nea Family Center uh, you know along Columbia that prior to uh, well we used to be on Mississippi the the place there had a you know significant issue with the cadmium these are these are things we should have known about, yeah. and that was my biggest concern. Is you know they had the the Tubman um, uh, conversation there about about the toxins, air toxins, and that was my question to the folks on the stage, which of course was the county and DEQ and, and everyone. Um, since when don't we know that arsenic is a problem? Yeah, right. And we have laws in place that say you know there's some level of you can't do this. Right, but we don't have anything that's monitoring it. That's the biggest problem. And is it that we can't afford to do that, to do the monitoring? We need to figure that out. We need to be able to figure out how we do those types of things to make sure that people have safe air. We say that Portland is one of the most livable cities in the country, and, and yet we have this issue. So it's very concerning to mm -hmm. me. I think we definitely need to pay attention to it and put some efforts towards making sure that we can, we can monitor our, our air quality. And yeah, thank you. Moving briefly along, um, do you have particular ideas on what the legislature might do to create more jobs, support economic development in our fair state? Well, one of the things that's always excited me, um, you know, as I said, you know, lifelong Oregonian, moved back and forth here and there, but as a very young person, I recognized that, you know, Portland was actually a very small city when I was young, yeah. you know, and I sort of used to lament that kind of thing. It was like, oh, I want to live in a big city. I want to live in a really cool city. But we didn't have the economic kind of development that was going on. I and was we here too. Right. And so we sort of brought that in and tried to make it so that we didn't, you know, that we could bring big, bigger business in and bring different things into this, in, not just into Portland, but in the entire state uh, to bring up our economic uh, capacity here. Um, and so overall, there's concerns now about corporations not paying their fair share of taxes. That needs to be taken care of on some level, and we'll try to figure that one out, I hope. But one of the things that always excited me about Oregon is that we were very innovative, and that we built things and changed things, and we're the first to do many different things uh, in the nation. Um, I think that we have the capacity to be a very, uh, a very green business opportunity here. I've seen many, many different things that over the years that have been de being developed here in Oregon that are environmentally sound, that are, are, are really important to overall to, to making sure that there's clean industry in the world. And I think we could be leaders in that area. And I really want to see that happen. And I think that if we're investing in any way, shape, and form in, in continuing to bring businesses in or grow businesses from the inside, that would be a piece that we should do. We have a few seconds. Oh what do you want to say? I want to say that, um, you know, my life being here in Oregon and living here in Oregon, I, I've, you know, I, I couldn't see myself living in any other place. I've been an advocate all that whole time, though, making sure that folks needed re who needed resources had the opportunity to have them. I can do that on a larger level. Terrific. Thank you so very much. I want to remind you that if you want to register to vote, you must do so by April 26th and our mail-in ballot is due on May 17th.